Hi, this is Scott Cunningham, founder of Arclight Dynamics. In this series of videos, we're going to be covering the general operation of your Arclight Dynamics plasma cutting system. Please keep in mind that if you have not set your table up yet, we will not be covering the general setup. You will need to refer to the Arclight Dynamics Quick Startup Guide, which is included in your manual. So, to start off, uh, just a quick overview of the um, desktop here when you first power your computer up. So first off, this is a Linux-based system, slightly different than a Windows system, which most people are familiar with. Uh, you'll notice this icon up here at the top left. This is essentially your Windows Start menu. And this is how you will power the computer on and off by using this button to shut down. Do not just press the button to shut the computer down. That's a hard shutdown, and that can cause memory issues. So remember to shut down by using your start menu up at the top left. So the basics of the few things I want to point out, for starters, is all your instructional manuals are located up here, along with the instructional videos. Um, including the videos that you're watching right now. The computer has a um, headphone jack mounted right above it that will allow you to listen to the computer uh, so you can play the videos on the machine to help you learn how to use it. Um, so uh, a few other things on the desktop I want to point out are some of the software programs. So basically you'll see these three software programs here. This is QCAD, that's a CAD program that will be used for designing parts. Inkscape, which is a vector drawing program that will be used for designing artwork. Your sheet cam and your control software, basically the P2 Plasma. Sheet cam is your camming software, that's where we'll set up cuts and the control software is your P2 Plasma and then you also have your P2 Pipe Cutter and P2 Router Profile. Now depending on, you will use the specific version um, for whatever operation you're doing. Each one is, it's the same program, it looks exactly the same but it's configured specifically for those uh, uses. So. For starting, we're going to talk about the P2 Plasma. We're going to double click into this system. It's going to pull up the command CNC control software. Now when you first power up your system, it will be an e-stop. You'll see the e-stop button is illuminated there. In order to pull your table out of e-stop, you have to hit the motor power on. And so if you look inside your glass door or your cabinet, you'll see a big green button that says on. And that will turn on the motor power. And essentially what that does is it sends power to the motors and locks them up so they can't move. Once your e-stop is ready, once you've done that, now you can pull it out of e-stop. If you ever turn off your motor power, you will go back into e-stop, okay? So motor power has to be on for your e-stop. If your e-stop still doesn't want to come on after you have select, turned on the motor power, check the e-stop buttons on your Arclight um, Arc Pro tables. You will have a red mushroom button on the left-hand side of the cabinet. On the Arc Max tables, you will also have mushroom buttons on either side of the gantry. So you can twist that button, make sure it pops out. Often in shipping, on first assembly and first startup, those buttons are pushed in and prevent you from starting your system. So jogging, first I want you to, over here you'll notice we have three different button options. This auto option is the, the one screen that you're going to be in most of the time. But for right now, I want you to click in the manual option. This brings up your jog control and your feed rate control. Okay. So first off, to start jogging your table, you're simply going to be 
using the arrow keys on your computer's keyboard. So first off, make sure you don't have anything in the way of your system moving in order to, uh, so it doesn't run into anything. You don't have anything left on the rails or um, items that you might hit. So your, your arrow keys control which way you jog, basically. So moving, hitting the up arrow moves the Y axis or your gantry in the positive direction. The down arrow moves it in the negative Y direction. The right arrow moves the X axis in the positive X direction. And the left arrow moves it in the negative X direction. And your page up and page down buttons move your Z axis up and down. So as you can see, I'm moving my jog, I'm jogging pretty slow right now. And if you hit two arrow buttons, it will jog diagonally, okay? So if you notice right here, your feed rate, this feed rate displays how fast you're jogging. And the feed rate, it will also display how fast you're, you're running when your machine is cutting. So I'm running 96 inches a minute, basically. Now, normally when you pull it up, you will be in the auto mode. If you click onto the manual button, it shows the jog and feed rate override control. Okay? You can see your jog rate slider. Currently we're running at 16% of our maximum speed. If I drag this up, we'll jog faster. Okay? And also the jog type is set to continuous. So first off, Picking a jog speed. I recommend picking a jog speed that you're comfortable with making small adjustments with. So I would keep it relatively slow. So that basically when you're setting up a cut, you're going to be moving the torch into position on the plate where you want to start the cut. And you're going to want to be able to relatively precisely align it on, say, the edge of the plate. Get pretty close to it. And so being able to be, having the jog speed set down slower is helpful for that. Now, but of course, when you are trying to move long distances, this is far too slow. So if you hold down the shift button and jog, it automatically shifts it into full speed jog. As you can see, we're running at 600 inches a minute there. If I run diagonally, Max speed, 848 inches a minute, okay? So, so you, can, you can adjust this jog sp speed to uh, speed things up, or I would just simply recommend keeping it a little bit lower and then using the shift button to get places quickly when you need to. Now your jog type is currently set to continuous, meaning if you hold down the button, it will continuously jog. You can set it to jog certain distances when you press the button. As you can see, we have these three options, a tenth of an inch, you know, a hundredth of an inch, or a thousandth of an inch. So we're moving small amounts of an inch. And then you can make it go even smaller distances. So this is barely moving at all. You won't really be able to see it. Okay. All you can, the only way you can tell is by looking at your readouts down here. These are your digital readouts. It's showing it motion in inches. Okay. One thing I want to keep tell you is um, a lot of people make this mistake. Is if is you, you, the way you essentially use this jog type is you'll jog to the corner where you're going to start your cut and say you're trying to precisely align on the corner or a particular part you'll make your adjustments small adjustments this way but the key thing to remember is before you start to cut your part switch back to continuous because what'll happen is you'll run your part, it'll cut out, 
and at the end of your part, you'll try to jog. And you'll be pressing the button. You're like, why isn't my machine jogging? And you won't notice that it's actually jogging simply, you know, a hundredth or a thousandth of an inch um, instead of <laughs> continuous jogging. You know, it, it, it's easy to think you broke it or that it broke itself. So remember, always check this, go back to continuous. So let's talk about homing. The first thing you always do when you power your machine is you home your table. This is vitally important for two reasons. First off, you have to set up your machine so it knows where the home position is, so it will be able to properly use its soft limits. So, first off, when you're before you do any homing moves, make sure your z-axis is high enough in the air where it won't hit things. You know, pull it up five, six inches up. First off, your home position is your lower, um, the machine's lower left or front left hand corner of the table. Okay, so when I hit home X, my X axis is going to move towards the left in the positive direction, basically. It's going to move up against the home switch and stop, basically, and then it will move back off the home switch a small distance, okay? Homing Y will pull the gantry towards the front of the table, so you want to make sure there's nothing in the way of it, nothing on the rails, and it will run into the home switches on the front of the table. Now, this does two things. One, it positions your table into the home position, so it's in a known location, and two, if your gantry is out of square, it will square it up because each side of the gantry mo will move independently until it hits the switch. So if you ever push your gantry or move it when it's powered down, it push it, you will push it out of square. What holds the gantry square are the motors. And in order to make sure the gantry square every time you power the machine up, you always want to home it. No homing Y. It's going to pull it up towards the front. And then home the table. Okay. So, here you can zero the table out. And your system is now homed. Okay. So, let me zoom back out here. Okay. A couple things about this display. You know, Dragging with the left click of the mouse will drag this around. The right zooms it in and out. You also zoom with the scroll wheel. You can see all these yellow lines. It's tracing my motion. If I want to get rid of that, I can clear the tool path. And that will delete that. So this red box here, that represents my soft limits. That's a program distances that the machine can move without running into its hard stops or going further than it should. So currently, I'll zoom in here. I can't move any further down or any further to the left. So if I try to jog, it won't let me. The machine is not, I'm trying to press the jog buttons and I'm not getting any motion. But I can go up and to the right. But if I try to jog back, I will stop at the home, at not the home switch, it stops at the soft limit. And so that soft limit is very important. It stops you from running into the hard stops on the table. I could actually go a little bit further, but that establishes my home position. So that's the second most important thing about setting your home position, is making sure that your soft limits are in the correct area. Okay. I want to discuss setting your part zero. The part zero is different from your home zero. Your home zero is set in the machine. And once you home the table, the machine will remember it. 
your part zero is going to be relative to where you want to start your cut, essentially. And so usually you're going to be starting your cut at the lower left hand of your part or plate. And so normally I would be starting my cut and essentially having it cut out in that, that area over there. So the bottom left of the plate will produce the area where I'm going to start my cut. So at this point, if I've decided that's where I want to start my cut, I want to zero out my X and Y. Now your Z axis, you could do one of two things here. You remember we didn't home the Z before because when we're homing, we're really concerned about the X and the Y, not so much about the Z. So as you can see, my Z is not in the right spot. It says it's negative four inches. Well, that's not correct. So you can do one of two things. You can either jog close to the plate and simply zero the Z, which is, works great because every time your machine goes to cut, it will touch off the material and find its, the correct zero spot. So being exactly at zero at this point is not important. Just being close is what's necessary. Or you could simply also go over top of, make sure you're over top of a piece of material, you can hit the home Z. And it will go down, touch the material, trigger the switch on the torch, and then back up a little bit. So that node, that's telling me we're right at zero right there. So I can zero out now. So that's setting your part zero. So your part zero is always relative to where you want to start your cut. You know, so I could start my cut here and zero out here. And when I run, it's going to cut up into the right of, the, uh, of where my torch is correct currently. So that's your part zero. One last thing I want to mention before I get out of this screen here on manual is the load material button. Okay, so right here, this is kind of a shortcut button. And when I hit this, the machine will move to this position. And so currently it'll be set for the back right hand side of your table. I can set this to a different position if I wanted to, basically. So if I hit the load material button, the first thing it's going to do is go up, move the Z to three inches, and then it will go to the back right hand side of the table. Now the machine moves at full rapid speed, so you want to make sure there's nothing in its way before you hit that button. For that reason, I generally don't use the load material button. I find it simpler to simply hold the shift button and jog the table to whatever position I want. You know, if I'm going to load a plate, I will jog towards the back. But it's up to you whether you use it or not. But in order for the load material button to work properly, you have to have homed your table in the right spot. Now, it because it's going off the machine home, not the part zero. So even though I may be, you know, setting my zero here, zeroing out X and Y, when I go to load material, it's going to go off the home position. So it's not going to run further than it should, basically. So, but if my home position wasn't set properly, it would run off and crash itself. So you don't want to do that. That's your load material button. Thanks for watching and I hope that video was helpful. Please remember our primary goal is to make your purchase profitable. So don't hesitate to reach out for help. You can reach us at 866-222-2154 or head over to our website where you'll find a complete list of all of our training materials. Thank you.